today, a cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline and Black Lives Matter shuts down streets in Texas, of all places. We have got the latest and it starts right now. Welcome to the News and Why It Matters. Happy Monday. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by his maiden voyage on the show. Spencer Corson here, a threat management expert, also author. Also an author. Author has of my The book, Safety has Trap. my name on it and everything. It does. Um, hey, that's look, you. Hey, You're look right. At that. Um, and uh, he, he has a, a very close, close connection with Blaze TV. You want to, would you share with the audience or just very quickly? I used to run Glenn Beck security detail. Yes. So, um, For a number of years. God bless him, right? I mean, he's still geez. here. <laughs> he's still here. <laughs> I'm well batting a thousand. <laughs> um, so, maiden voyage on the show, no pressure. We just expect uh, just perfection. Uh, yeah, 100% right, at all times. The best. Uh, also joined by Yaku Boyens, host of the Yaku Boyens show. Thank Good you for being here, here as Good well. Good to meet you. Good Absolutely. to meet you, sir. Great um, to have you here. Who, yeah, you just have connections with everyone. Well, we work with law enforcement. We appreciate law enforcement. We really That's do. True. And, do and the guys who really fight. Yeah, there. so we're just blessed by yes. these guys. Yeah. Um, so headlines of the day. Um, on Sunday, yesterday, the U.S. Department of Transportation issued an emergency declaration for 17 states and the District of Columbia in the wake of a cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline on Friday. Uh, the declaration permitted fuel to be transported by road to um, all of these different states. One expert said that the attack was the most significant and successful attack on energy infrastructure we know of in the United States. Um, and then for those who don't know, the Colonial Pipeline uh, runs 5,500 miles and provides nearly half the gasoline, diesel, and jet fuel that is used on the East Coast. So this affected um, these the business side computer systems, um, not the systems that directly run the pipelines themselves, but uh, the company, which is based out of Georgia, said that they shut down the pipelines as a precaution and has engaged a third-party cybersecurity firm to investigate investigate the incident. Um, now, if <laughs> speaking of no pressure, no pressure, guys, but if it's not corrected within days, the eastern half of the United States um, could see a, a surge in gas, oil and diesel prices. This is, of course, already on top of the surge in gas, oil and diesel prices that we have already seen. Now, Spencer, you are um, a threat management expert. So this is a type of threat, right? Oh, it's a, it's a clear and present danger. And yeah. I think the most interesting point that you made in your statement was that we know of. Yeah. Mm. So often what we see with cybersecurity hacks is there are those who have been hacked and those who haven't realized it yet. Mm. And so we saw with uh, the trade winds, yeah. I'm sorry, solar winds, yeah. it was months, Home Depot, months, so many of the, in the risks to our infrastructure gas, water, energy, defense, national security. This is where, when we get taken down, how it will happen. Mm -hmm. And it's, the problem is, is that these bad actors, it's not like in the movies where they're doing some Ethan Hunt rappelling down from a skylight, you know, doing some spider dance to access <laughs> a mainframe. They are more often than not stealing valid username and passwords that will allow you access into these into these terminals. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like alert fatigue where they're getting all these pings and warnings and, and radars. These are, you know, we saw this with Tesla a couple months ago. We saw it with solar winds before. Like I said, we see it with this. What's next? We don't know. But we need to really step up our game because our enemies have been at this a lot longer than we have. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Yaku, according to government sources, one of the, this is just a, this one of the suspected entities um, is Darkseid, which is a Russian hacking outfit. So I'm sure Donald Trump will somehow get blamed in this. Yeah, I was going to say, we, obviously, <laughs> they're not going to tie that to President Biden. And he's not going to be, you know, blamed for doing something with the Russians get involved. But this is a huge case in point why we need to decentralize our lives, why we can't have all our data flow through a single Facebook or mm -hmm. through single platforms, iOS platforms, clouds, because you hack into that one system like we saw on Facebook just a couple of weeks ago, and all of a sudden they gain access to multiple sectors of society yes. and now now they can yeah. they can hit you and this is where it's going to happen this is how you will take america is you turn the lights off 
or you shut the gas down or we saw what happened in an ice storm we we are not we are not set up in this yeah. country with redundancy, which is why the Trans-Canadian Pipeline was so important. You need redundancy. And now, finally, people are going to realize that, yeah, it's a lot more expensive to take the gasoline on road freight. And so the gas mm -hmm. prices are going to go up, not only because this president is tax crazy and he wants to tax you know, you out the wazoo. But if a system goes down like this, like we see in other countries, Puerto Rico, power goes down, mm -hmm. the country fails. Gasoline goes down in this country and you can't operate. Yeah. Everything is on, on road freight. Our food is on road freight. I mean, so gas affects everything. So, but it is for me, it's all the eggs in one basket. They hack the basket, they get information, unless I'm wrong here. No, but, and it's not even just that they're able to hack the basket, but it, access to this basket gives you access to this correct. basket and this basket yeah. and this basket. And if we're gonna explain this to, to the everyday viewer, it may be very difficult to hack your bank account, but it's very easy to hack your Fitbit. And mm. if the username and password of your, of your Fitbit mm -hmm. can backdoor me into your bank account, You're in. I'm going the path of least resistance. Yeah. Wow. I, sometimes I find it surprising wow. that there hasn't been some sort of huge cybersecurity. I mean, like you were saying, if we're going to we get attacked, of. well, that we know of. But something that's so big that yeah. we would know of it. I mean, when we're talking about the United States government, um, you know, things of that nature, it's, it's really quite shocking to me that that we know of. Well, that well that just look at when the, uh, when the G6 satellite was, was compromised yeah. and mm -hmm. half the communications on the, on the eastern half of the United States went down. Now yeah. imagine that, I mean, it's, I don't wanna you know, get into like war game scenarios here, but we, Basically, we we're need all to, gonna die. We need to step up Is our yeah. <laughs> We need to really step up our efforts. But, but, make, but four years we had the White House, right? Four years, and I always say this, we, on the right side, we get caught napping. We do not have a 50 year game plan. We don't play for the long game. We play for the short game. Every four years we win the White House, we don't, that's what we play towards. And there's, again, there's no redundancy. But 17 states, that's massive. It's yeah. huge. Yeah. Texas is in there. Texas is larger, mm -hmm. it's larger than the country I was born in, for crying out loud. So you're talking about this is the equivalent of nations who are, who are hit at simultaneously. When you have 17 states in the U.S., and it is the, you know, the, the southeastern corridor, which, which by default is also one of the most difficult to distribute stuff to, this is huge. I mean, it, it's a wake-up call well, at the and, least. And I think it extends beyond politics, too, because, I mean, it's really been since Eisenhower, Mm. that we had a political administration that was willing to sacrifice short-term uh, short heartache for long-term mm. gains. We just don't, in the age of, I have to tweet this, I need it on a stump speech, it's gotta be the byline of, of today's headline. We just don't have the, the willingness to put America first in the way that America needs to be put first. Yeah, yeah. Well, well said. Amen. Um, so on the subject of uh, soaring gas prices, <laughs> this is fun. Um, so uh, the the what who who is he in the administration? He I know he's the former um, Michigan Democratic governor, but um, but he was on uh, uh, Granholm was on with Jake Tapper. I'm sorry, she was on with Jake Tapper. Um, asked about uh, skyrocketing gas prices. This, uh, this one is really interesting to me because just as an average person who has operated during the pandemic, you see a lot of things being blamed on the pandemic. I never would have thought to, to hear soaring gas prices also being blamed on, it's just the pandemic, there's nothing else to see here. Here it is, Energy Secretary, that's what her title is, Energy Secretary uh, Jennifer Granholm is uh, discussing the soaring gas prices and it's just like well i mean you know the pandemic watch republicans on the hill are blaming your energy policies to remind our viewers you're an en you're the energy secretary energy policies from the biden administration for driving up gas prices prices are about 50 cents higher per gallon today than when president biden took office um beyond whether or not you think that, that your policies are to blame are you worried that the prices could impact whether or not Americans travel, which is, of course, needed to put money back into the economy. People need to travel, right. But we need to get the virus under control first. We need to get to that 70%. We need to get to herd immunity. You know, why, why has, have gas prices gone up? Could that be because of the virus itself as well? Is it, I mean, everything is tied together. Or hear me out or it's not tied together at all 
and it's just a very convenient excuse for any time that anything sounds, goes yeah, that's wrong. That's how today's talking points are. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really, really sad um, yeah. to hear that. I mean, could, nothing to do with you know the Biden-Harris administration's vision for the future of oil and gas. Or our relationship that's changing with Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. or our reintroduction into the Paris Climate Accords, or a million other things right. that, listen, there is a finite amount of oil in Saudi Arabia. They have so much time to sell it, and they're, it's a seller's market yeah. right now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Spencer, you, you give me an opinion on this, but I sat in that chair, we had Eric here, and I said, way back before the election, I said, gas prices are gonna go through yes. the roof because yes. of policy. Yeah. Because of policy, that's gonna happen, because he's gonna go to the Middle East, and we're gonna re-engage in the Middle East the way Trump pulled out of the Middle East, we became energy independent, we're gonna become energy dependent again because they've gotta play with the Middle East. Mm -hmm. The Middle East got hit so hard on oil that they started to convert to sport and other means of making yeah. money. Now they go, great, and watch, all of a sudden now there's attacks on Israel again. The Middle East is gonna be unstable again because oil is valuable again in the Middle East and thank you Biden because the left can't operate without an unstable Middle East, my opinion, my opinion. Historically, we've seen that. So that's why the gas prices are going up mm. because the ebb and flow and, and the price per barrel and, they, you know, and, and they're gonna regulate the price per barrel and they have that rate where they wanna be for the Middle East to be stable. That's why the virus. Yeah, 18 <laughs> I mean, months ago, the, the price of gallon per, or the price per barrel was like less than zero. Yeah. It was like actually in the negative. So yeah. just the ebb and economic ebb and flow of it's going to rise. I mean, I think what is the uh, what is the ideal price per barrel or price per gallon? Like two fifty, two twenty five, somewhere around there. Around so there. Per, ga like per gallon, per gallon, per gallon. Like yeah, the, but per barrel, they'd like to be at seventy two. Yeah. Uh, seventy two dollars right. per barrel, but per gallon, two fifty. Right, but, but I, it was what negative three dollars mm -hmm. for yeah, yeah, a yeah. year and a half. So yeah. we we need to see these yeah. natural ebb and flows. Yeah, it is not, however the virus. Well, you never can be too sure. You know, I went to uh, the ice cream parlor with my family over the weekend. I did not eat any ice cream, by the way, for those of you wondering, you know me very well. Um, but my son wanted, well, because I just don't, I can't. You eat Built Bar. I do eat Built, Built bar, bar, but no ice cream. So, but my son wanted some. And you no know, we hadn't, we hadn't been, <laughs> we hadn't been in a while. And so we go in there and I'm, I'm like, well, which one do you think you want? Do you want to try this one? Um, Ma'am, can he please try this flavor? And they're like, oh, um, we're, by the way, fully open. No, like, don't have to wear your masks. Um, we can't, we can't do samples because of the pandemic. And I'm like, but you're scooping with the ice cream scoop from the same bin. And also, that don't you they would... use disposable scoops? Yes, okay. I'm like, what Just... are you double dipping? Once someone is that no, what you the, used to no, do? The, I don't the make it make is permanent. sense. <laughs> the insanity is permanent. But it's so blaming the virus. It's, like, it's what? crazy. It doesn't make any sense. And I went, yeah. Yeah. Uh, no sense. okay. Yeah. And yeah. then another, and then another employee chimed in, like she was waiting for me to like be mean. Well, it's it's just our company policy now because of the pandemic. I'm like, I got it. But please make it make sense. I yeah. don't understand. I don't, I don't want to do a shameless plug for the book, but there's a chapter yeah, in my book called False Authority, which is all about how people in positions of quote unquote power uh, uh, exert that authority beyond their own expertise. And this is a classic example of that. Uh, mm. How about like literally everything that's happening right now in the world is a classic example yes. of that. This could not be more timely, I think, Spencer. Yeah, that book, yeah, Spencer, that, I told you before the show, I think the, time, the, the timing of your book coming out is epic and people should grab it. it it's as crazy as, as, as saying our inner states are racist. Remember that comment when they said, look, the roads are racist because the roads were built only. <laughs> right. that, this is how crazy we are today. I mean, yeah. it, no, the roads are racist. We, we had a segment on this show about roads saying the roads are racist because- But how do the roads feel about that? <laughs> their feelings are hurt, so they crack. You know, but, but oh. certain communities live on the wrong <laughs> side of the road. The pandemic is That's... the pandemic is the reason for the gas price. Yep, and the virus <sighs> makes sure your son can get a sample. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I was uh, really upset about that. Like, come on, I understand if it's a logical. Like, just if you want to stop giving samples, just tell me you want to stop giving samples. Don't say because of the pandemic. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor. Tommy John, um, let me tell you, it's it's spring, which not only means horrible allergies if you're here in Texas suffering like a lot of us are. No, we don't have COVID, it's just allergies. It also means spring cleaning. So it is time to uh, fling away your last year's underwear, okay, and step up into some new 
Tommy Johns. Now, um, a lot of you out there, you may think that Tommy John is just for men, but it's also for women as well, which I found out when they sent me, um, I ordered some lounge pants and they have sports bras. And I mean, all of their stuff is amazing. And my, my husband, who I get home and I'm like, please don't talk to me until I put on my Tommy Johns because it's been a day. And, I, and he waits and I go put on my Tommy Johns and he thinks, he's like, Sarah, you're being very dramatic. There's no way that this stuff feels that good. Oh, no, no, no. I got him a pair and he put it on and he was like, holy crap, this stuff is so soft. This is the best fitting underwear. This is the best shirt. I'm never getting out of this. So... It was not me who was the dramatic one, I just want to say. Uh, so if any of you are looking for, hey, Father's Day is coming up. We just celebrated Mother's Day. Father's Day is around the corner as well. Right now, you're going to get 20% off your first order if you go to tommyjohn.com slash why. I'm telling you, it is the softest underwear or loungewear you will ever put on your body. tommyjohn.com slash why. That's W-H-Y, tommyjohn.com slash why. Back in a minute. There is a viral video out right now that uh, shows a Black Lives Matter protest here in Texas, in Plano, around the corner. Just for reference, very familiar with Plano, graduated from Plano, graduated high school from Plano, lived there for many years, actually just recently moved down the street um, from where this took place. So this hits very close to home here at uh, Blaze TV Studios, but uh, the video is of a Texas motorist confronting a Black Lives Matter pro, well, I say protest, I don't really feel comfortable calling it a protest anymore because saying protest uh, somehow gives the implication that it is just a peaceful, you know, these peaceful people who are just standing there uh, minding their own business on the sidewalk. That's not actually what they're doing. They're blocking traffic and got into a confrontation. It's amazing to watch how all of this plays out. Take a look. Get the out of my way! Hey, 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 where's the hey, talk? Hey, Get So for those of you who are listening on podcasts, the officer is attempting to uh, get the driver, the motorist, back to his car. Just to say what we see on the video doesn't really seem to be too concerned with the people taking, occupying the roadway. I, I just like to say that. Don't know what happened behind the scenes. Don't know if he was waiting for backup. I'd like to believe Plano officers uh, are better than this, but just from what we see in the video, certainly he is standing by uh, allowing this protest to take over the roadway. You can see cars backed up waiting for them to, uh, to do something, and they're not. They're just standing there taking over the roadway. Um, what was concerning to me was that there was only, it seemed to be there was only one man who was very upset. They would think in Texas that would not, I'd like to believe that would not fly. Spencer, what's going on? I, there's so many things in that video that there are too many cars with their doors open. We don't see a, a traffic light, so we don't know if it was a red light mm -hmm. while they were doing that, and then the cops were pulling them off when it was green. Or, but, and well, I, that motorist and I, was obviously and I, very and I mad. I don't <laughs> like how f perfectly framed that shot is. Mm. It's almost like a tracking shot and I don't know who the guy in green was. It was is, this a, is this a media? Like, is the, guy, is the guy in the green tactical vest there for some kind of media protection? I think that, that it's been clarified. Yeah. I there, don't think that it's been clarified. Nothing but, about that video makes sense. Well, but there was, a, um, there was a man, at least, I don't know if it was the one in the tactical gear, but some, there was a person involved in the Black Lives Matter uh, group who pulled a gun on the motorist when he came up. And I, it's very, it happens very quickly. I don't know if you, do you guys do saw it. Do you see it. that in the video? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we, if we have the, just the video without the sound, if we can play it again, um, it, I can, we can kind of point it out. So when he, it's when he, go, he walks up here and let's see. Okay, so he's telling the cop, make a move. Um, by the way, there's kids in the back of that truck, so I have to believe that that but truck But the guy is with the radio in, his, in the front of that, of that green tactical vest... And it's Not that here, guy. here, there. 
Back it up, Control. Yeah, you, got, yeah, did you see him? A gun. I, yeah, yeah, I saw something in his hand. I cannot yeah, confirm that that was a gun. Yeah, if you back it up a little go, bit. Yeah, go back a little bit. Go, right, up, no. Now forward a little bit. Uh, Y'all were it's doing this. Right, right there, there it is. Right there. Yeah. Is that a gun? It was, yeah, I mean, it was, it was reported that it was a gun. Yeah, and it, it looks close. It looks, could be. Certainly it's a weapon. Yeah, and, we, he ha- and he has a tactical vest on, so he knows. And he's got a radio to the front. Yeah. So he's either law enforcement or he's security for some kind of other entity that's on site there. For, yeah. the Bla- for Black Lives Matter, maybe. Possibly. possibly. Very possibly. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's interesting. I just, again, I would not have thought that something like this would happen in Plano, Texas, of all places. You know, I keep saying, you guys bring this to the suburbs. You're going to get in trouble because yeah. someone's going to get killed. Someone's yeah. going to get hurt. And um, it, this did not, not that I would want someone to get hurt. But, but I also don't see a road going this way. Like, are they at an intersection? Yeah, yeah they're yeah, in an they overpass. They are. They are. Yeah. They're, they're at, they're at, they're at, at, I believe it's, I know it's 121. It's 121 and the tollway, I believe. Yeah. Um, so, so, Sarah, if they, if they go two blocks, if they go two blocks north from where they are there, this doesn't happen because they're in Fresco, okay? And there's a, there's a bill going to the floor of Plano now that's going to stop this from happening this week. And I think it was set up by knowing what's coming because there was not a shooting, there was not a killing. The, the, the banner said, stop killing us, stop killing us, that the one girl holds up. It's not like there was an incident. This is, this is Black Lives Matter, Inc., inciting violence in areas where they know they can create disturbance to, mm-hmm. to stir the pot in mm-hmm. Texas. And I'm just saying... That guy who jumped out, pretty big dude, he's coming out. You're going to see that all over the state in areas where that's not going to fly. Somebody's going to make a mistake, and they're going to go into the wrong block, the wrong time, and do something like that, and and it's going to get physical because this is Texas. It was strategic, though. That's Plano, and Plano is a little softer at the moment than Frisco or McKinney, Mm -hmm. and so there was a reason. This is what I've always said. These things are so orchestrated. They're coordinated. This is not just random people saying, oh, that corner, that street, that time of the day. It's very strategic. There's help. There's very strategic, in my opinion, there's very strategic help, like when the bricks showed up and piles and and whatever, right? Right, right. So they know at this time of day, next week something's happening. We've got to make a statement. We're making a statement and see, can we scare the city council? Can we scare the mayor? Don't go through. Don't sign that bill. Don't outlaw these kind of things. And so um, for that matter, yeah, Texas, it's going to look different. I, wrong place, wrong time. It could get ugly. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? I Spencer? will say from a personal safety standpoint, you always have the right to defend and protect yourself. Just looking at this particular shot, there's ways you can drive around the crowd onto the lawn and get away. There's ways you can put your car into reverse and get away. When you're driving a car and you have your car and then you, or I'm sorry, you're, this is you and there's another car in front of you, mm-hmm. you always want to stop so that you can see where the back tires are touching the road. Because if you get any more than that, you don't have turnout space mm. to give yourself options. If you, have enough, if you have enough space to turn around and go. And the other thing is, traffic can only be stopped if traffic stops. Right. So there's nothing wrong with just taking your foot off the accelerator and just allowing your car to move forward at, at its own legally permissive. If it's a green light and these people, you are not trying to run them over. You are not mm-hmm. trying to be hurt. Mm-hmm. But movimiento es vida. Movement is life. Yeah. And if you feel threatened, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you doing what you need to do to defend yourself. But you just took me back years, you know, 19, being South African military. And anybody that's raised in South Africa will tell you, as a rule, still my kids ask me, Dad, why do you stop so far back? It's just a common <laughs> rule. Even now, yeah. my whole wow. life, we're just trained. I can go anywhere in the U.S., even in Texas. I, I keep space. You have to be able to get out. And it's just fascinating to me that it's come here. This is, this is, this is third world yeah. country stuff we learn to do, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we don't roll, drive with our windows down because carjackings are through the roof. Right. And you always, I'm so glad you mentioned that. And to me, it comes down to this. Our situational awareness in this country is very low. The general American population situation awareness is low. And maybe now it needs to go up. Understanding how to manage in a situation to get out. Because it's maybe not forward. It maybe is Well, we, Yeah, we have a problem in America where we... We can no longer afford to live in a world where we simply hope that nothing will happen and then, ex- and then solely rely on the first responders to save us once something does. We need to start having a proactive role and participating in our own protection. And that starts with having 
a healthy sense of skepticism or a moderate dose of vigilance, or it's making sure I have enough turnout space. It's knowing where the additional exits are. It's knowing, okay, well, if I just put my car in reverse, I can go around this crowd. Because if when mo moments matter most and things really do break bad, you do not want to be caught in the middle of it. Mm. No. I, w I was taught the best fight in the world is the one you walk away from. You yeah. know, and so there's a point to be made to go through the crowd, but you made your point, but at what risk and your family and kids are involved. So at some point it's just, you know, get out, but yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to the day that Black Lives Matter learns not to mess with people though. I just, I, yeah, it it's, it's gonna happen. I hope no one gets hurt, but it's time, well time that they learned that lesson. All right, we've got more to come, uh, including Dr. Fauci, saying that maybe next Mother's Day we might be as close to nor normal as possible. I don't know. We're not sure. We got to see how the sixth inning, the bottom of the sixth inning, plays out of the pandemic. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Built Bar. So those of you who have watched the show for a while, you know that we have created a food cult with Built Bar. Is there any, is there any security threat to, say, to saying food cult, Spencer? No, protein is good. Healthy, healthy, and healthy is safe. Okay, okay, good. <laughs> All right, so they are protein bars. Uh, for those of you who have not tried them yet, join the club, please. Okay, they're covered in 100% chocolate. They are low in calories. They're low in carbs. They're high in protein, high in fiber, and they taste like you're cheating on your diet because they taste like you're eating a candy bar. They've got tons of different flavors. I know, Yaku, you've tried several of them. I love them. them. They're amazing. Them. They're amazing. Amazing. They just had a deal where they were doing a special strawberry flavor for Mother's Day weekend. Um, so you got to get on their email list too because they're always doing these new flavors. Um, so you, you're not going to want to miss it. Don't sleep on this deal. If you have not joined the club, you got to go to builtbar.com. Use promo code uh, NEWS15 to save 15% on your order. It is NEWS15 only at B-U-I-L-T, builtbar.com. Back in a minute. The greatest con man of all time, also known as Dr. Anthony Fauci, was on with George Stephanopoulos this week, and uh, say that three times fast. And uh, he was asked, you know, it was Mother's Day, it was just yesterday, and he was asked what next Mother's Day would look like in a post, well, it's not a post-COVID world because Dr. Fauci doesn't ever want COVID to fully go away. That means he becomes irrelevant again. So here is what Dr. Fauci said on uh, what not this, no, not this Mother's Day, not what happens Sunday, but a year from now is going to look like. Watch. Give everyone a sense of what the country is going to look like next Mother's Day. Well, George, I hope that next Mother's Day we're going to see a, a dramatic difference than what we're seeing right now. I believe that we will be about as close to back to normal as we can. And there's, there's some conditions to that, George. We've got to make sure that we get the overwhelming proportion of the population vaccinated. When that happens, the virus doesn't really have any place to go. There aren't a lot of vulnerable people around. And where there are not a lot of vulnerable people around, you're not going to see a surge. You're not going to see the kinds of numbers we see now. So as close to normal wow. as possible, who knows if, I mean, you know, what did you think you were ever going to get back to normal after you gave the government all of this power and control? Did you think that they were going to give it back to you? Uh, let's do, let me do, let me enter one more into the conversation. And then gentlemen, I want to get your thoughts. Let's listen to, um, it was not just Dr. Fauci, but also the White House COVID coordinator, Jeffrey Zents, who said, um, th th to me, this was particularly shocking because he was talking about how CDC guidance uh, across, you know, uh, uh, eventually will allow more and more people the privilege of taking off their masks. The privilege. Watch. Journalists are annoyingly harping on this, and some health experts are, is because there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and President Biden being able to take off his mask in a room full of journalists and White House staffers, all of whom are fully vaccinated, is a demonstration that the vaccines work. You and I are both vaccinated and you and I are in a room together talking and I have no fear that I'm going to get the virus from you and I assume vice versa. And I think the concern is that by being overly cautious, the signal is going out to the public uh, that there isn't necessarily a light at the end of the tunnel. Do you understand why people well, are I think I think everyone is tired um, and wearing a mask is it can be a pain. Uh, but we're, we're getting there, and the light at the end of the tunnel is brighter and brighter. Let's keep up our guard. Let's follow the CDC guidance. And the CDC guidance across time will allow vaccinated people more and more privileges to take off that mask. 
Oh, but oh, oops, only if you're vaccinated. You only get the privilege of taking your mask and breathing fresh air if you are vaccinated. That's what America's about, right? Sarah, Zeitz is sitting five and a half feet from Tapper without a mask on. Well, he's it, vaccinated. But everybody in the White House press room is oh, I vaccinated. I, I mean, the hypocrisy is insane. You, it's insane, the hypocrisy now. Fauci, by the, well, by the way, Biden and, and uh, the two Bidens go and don't wear a mask next to the Carters who are like 500 years old. Yeah, yeah. But, but, we, but you can kill, no, but you can kill old other. people. No, but when you kill old people in this country, you get an award. You get an Emmy. Yeah, yeah You get an Emmy. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 one of the biggest safety traps that we have allowed ourselves to fall into in this country is allowing for our ideology to become aligned with our identity. Mm. And it is becoming more and more difficult for the everyday citizen to delineate those two things. I can believe this and also believe this. I can believe that the coronavirus is real and I can also believe that wearing a mask won't do anything to protect me. We can have a highlight reel of all the f false authority things that Fauci has said from, if you get COVID, you're gonna die, to, Masks are absolutely pointless, mm -hmm. and uh, other than the most minuscule of droplets, which would drop out, you're not stopping anything, to, oh, no, you absolutely have to wear a mask. Well, maybe you don't have to wear a mask. Well, you should, you shouldn't. Like, the problem that the, why America has a, has a distrust with, with, with leadership is because leadership has no real sense of what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And when they do make a mistake, the last thing they're going to do is Say, hey, listen, you know what? Yeah, it's own it. Listen, yeah. I mean, in today's world where transparency is, 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 is legitimacy, where b being raw and real and unfiltered is what people find most relatable, why have our leadership not realized that? Why are they still clinging to this antiquated way of trying because to treat people control. like they're stupid? Because yeah. they can't control a population like that, Spencer. They can't it's control a population. It's not their job to control the population. It, it is, is the their, population's yeah, job to control them. Yes. It's their prerogative to control us. The left 100% cannot function if they cannot run this like a socialist state where they tell you what to think, when to think it, and what to do. And listen, the absolute nonsense, and we got to call this to, to, to the carpet, the so-called, uh, air quotes for those of you who are listening, you know, a scientific class of the left, okay? What that man just told you is that, hey, once we get 70% of the vaccine, the virus has nowhere to go, Sarah. How long have we had a flu vaccine in this country? So the virus is just gone because there's a flu vaccine? Oh, no, 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 but this virus is going to play by the rules. Because when we cross that threshold of 70%, the virus will leave. It'll go to Mars or somewhere else. Because if we have a vaccine, North of City, herd immunity, that's what they want you to be, a sheep. They want you to behave like a sheep as a herd. You're going to eliminate a virus? We've had the flu vaccine mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. The virus is still there. Why? Because, come on. The, the scientific class is bull crap, okay? Mm -hmm. They spin the American people, and the American people have to say, I will not be spun anymore. In a story. I'm going to think for myself. Yeah, I don't think it's the scientific... Cl I think just like there was, a, there was always that, uh, that very clear separation of church and state between editorial and news, mm -hmm. there used to be a very clear divide between science and opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yes. And yeah. The, and everything has kind of, from native content on 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 the news side to the opinion of facts on the other, and there is a r real divide between those two things. Well, yeah, and it's especially when you're asking someone like Dr. Fauci to comment on something like lockdowns, which is like that's not your lane, right? Like right. stay in your lane, that's not your lane. You, you're you not the economic expert. You don't get to make, we didn't elect right. you to make these decisions. Also, he is Why the, do we keep he is the spokesperson him? for a political office. He's, he's beholden to a political oversight. I would much rather them have an independent third party yeah. uh, scientist on there to be like, hey, listen, this is what's good, this is what's bad, this is best practice, move forward. Not only will they not put a third party independent yeah. scientist, they're being banned from YouTube, they're exactly. being banned from right. Twitter, you, they can't spread their doctor expert yeah. opinion anywhere right. if it differs from the government truth. Because yeah. the truth sets people free, that's biblical, and the lack of truth, you can put people in bondage. This is why they will not bring a third party. This is the only guy that survives every president. 
He is as part of the system as anybody's ever been part of the system. He's a politician today. Yeah. He's, he's a doctor who hasn't seen a patient in 15 years. He's, he's our science expert. He's a politician today. He's a rock star. Mm -hmm. He's on ma magazines. Mm -hmm. And he survived the Trump administration and was hired by Trump. Yeah. For crying out yeah. loud. Come what, on. This what, guy is as deep state as they come. I do a lot of litigation support in with my practice. And one of the first things uh, opposing counsel will say is, well, when was the last time you actually studied security? When was, was the last security right. assessment you were at? Because there are people who are either doctors or scholars, whoever, where all they do yeah. is just expert witness testimony. And it's right. like, oh, so you're, you'll just say whatever they want you to say, but right. you don't actually have Good a point. practice that you have to adhere to to keep your reputation in check? Oh, no? Well, then how can we, you're just, you're being bought for your narrative. Well, right. And I think Fauci has found himself in a very similar boat. Yeah, amen. Well, All sorry. right, uh, we've got more to come. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Trust and Will. So a lot of you, you're just starting out, maybe you're buying your first home, you're having some babies, you're building your wealth. You gotta be sure to add securing your family's future to your to-do list by establishing a will or trust at trustandwill.com. I know you guys, it's, it's uncomfortable to think about, but you really, really, you got to think about it. You've got to prepare yourself and your family, really, at trustandwill.com, setting up an estate plan. It's very simple. It's convenient. It's secure. Uh, for as little as $39, you can nominate guardians for your children. You can determine who would get your things, uh, plan for your future, me future medical care. They make it very, very easy. Um, and I don't know, you know, you were talking about uh, opposing counsel and attorneys. Um, hiring a traditional estate attorney is going to cost thousands of dollars and uh, using a one size fits all template is really not nearly specialized enough. So trust and will is the good, perfect, happy medium to meet your needs. Uh, they're, design they're designed by estate planning experts and customized for the state that you live in. They've got live customer support seven days a week and the trustandwill.com team is available to answer any of your questions. You gotta go to trustandwill.com slash why. It is trustandwill.com slash why. You'll get 10% off plus free shipping if you go to trustandwill.com slash why. Back in a minute. Canadian pastor Arthur Pawlowski was arrested uh, over the weekend for committing the heinous crime. If, if you're the Canadian police, you believe it, the heinous crime of holding a church service, which of course violated uh, Alberta's public health orders. Now, this is the same pastor who you may have seen in the viral video, I think it was last month, who was uh, calling that the police showed up at his church service. He ordered them to leave. He said, you need to leave. You're Gestapo, you're Gestapo. You need to leave, you need to leave. He continued shouting them down as they tried to, they tried to interject, they tried to interrupt him. They tried, and he said, no, 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 you need to leave. Finally kicked them out uh, in what I thought was a very beautiful moment. And of course, they, they, they can't have that. They can't have the people actually controlling themselves. So uh, the police came in, I know there was like, at one point, they said they reported that there were heavily armed SWAT team uh, that showed up just to arrest him. Here's a tweet that says, earlier this afternoon, my fellow pastor was arrested in Calgary for the crime of holding a church service as he does every Saturday morning. Are you awake yet? Um, and now just <laughs> to give you what the city of Calgary has to say. Earlier this morning, CPS lawfully enforced this order by proactively serving an organizer of a church service with the court order in an effort to ensure that citizens attending the, sun the Saturday service were abiding by current COVID-19 public health orders. The order was served prior to the church service and CPS did not enter the church service. The service organizer acknowledged the injunction but chose to ignore requirements for social distancing, mask wearing, and reduced capacity for attendees and continued with the event. It's getting really scary. Yeah in Canada. Um, it's really, really scary if you look at uh, their requirements for if you enter the country, even as a citizen, they're forcing you to quarantine in a, it's a government run facility. Um, you can't go to your home. Um, it is, you know, I guess that's what happens when you vote for a guy based off of his looks because everyone was like, oh, Justin Trudeau is so dreamy. He's so cute. And now look what you have. It's also what it looks like when you realize that you don't have the Bill of Rights behind you. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for everyone who says, you know, America is bad, America doesn't care about, that's protected. You know what I mean? 
Right. Freedom of religion, well, it's, freedom it's of assembly. It's supposed it's to be. Yeah. The problem is that we still have government officials who would like to just override it and supersede right. it. Right. Which what I want to know is, did they check. arrest him on the way to do the? to do that service, or is he arrested leaving the service having done it? Um, I believe it was after. Okay, so he had, quote unquote, committed the crime and right. then they were getting yeah. him afterwards. Right, right, yeah. um, So a lot of the things we're seeing today had a run on pre-COVID, and they don't want to admit that because they want to blame everything on COVID, but in 2005, 2006, I lived in Canada. I played football in Canada. And in 05, 06, there was an attack on God in that country, and it has been there since okay mm -hmm. that is a nation that is that is on the direction to where australia once was to be as a godless nation as you can be the church has been under attack there eons before COVID. they've been after the church in that country COVID is an excuse and so many corrupt politicians today around the world and in this country are using COVID as the stick to finally deliver the blow they've been wanting to deliver for forever okay mm -hmm. so no, they didn't arrest pastors maybe in 05, 06, 07, but they pressured the heck out of them. I lived there. That country is a nationalized country. The, the government runs everything in that country and it's getting worse and worse. So for me, when I look at COVID today, even in the U.S., I go, oh, the bad actors are coming out saying, we just got handed a big stick mm. to do what so we've always wanted to do. So they're disguising religious infringement under the guise of, COVID. of uh, health endangerment? Yes. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You wouldn't want to be careful about that. Yeah. yeah. That's a very slippery slope. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, do you? So, what? Are, how do you stand on that? As far as do you think that there were all of these bad actors in government? Because I, t I totally agree with you, Yaku. I see that all of these people are just waiting for the opportunity to claim this power from the people, and once they see that opportunity, You're, they're like, oh. No gee, one darn. ambitious is ever going to let a crisis go to waste. Yeah. 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 I mean, and politicians are nothing if not ambitious. Yeah, yeah. yeah ain't that the truth? Well, uh, a, lot, a lot of people are like, oh, Canada, why can't we be more like them? They have free health care. By the way, no, they don't. Um, they pay for a lot in taxes. And, oh, when they get really sick, they come here? Yeah, you Just do not. So you know? <laughs> You, you sprain an ankle, Canada is great. You need surgery. Right. You, yeah, you, you want to you you yeah. come here. Right, exactly. right. So, uh, you know, when you give the government that kind of control over your life, this is the kind of thing that happens. They're probably never yeah, going to stop Number one argument against socialized medicine is the military. Y yes, that right. is true. <laughs> I'm sure if we had time, Spencer would go, he could go in a whole segment just about the yes, horrible I could. medicine yes, I in could. the military. Um, all right, we got to take a break. We'll be back in a second. It is, it's so interesting. Yeah. Veteran oh. care, if you can get it, is great. Oh, Getting it? Oh, brother. I play, I play for the argument. Uh, all right, before we go, want to remind everyone, the safety trap, Spencer here wrote this, and uh, in case you haven't noticed from today's program, he's like, he's kind of a know-it-all about everything safety related, so. Safety related. Kind of a big, <laughs> kind of a big deal right now. Spencer, tell them what, it comes out the 18th? It comes out next Tuesday, May 18th. It is available for pre-order right now, and on May 18th, it will be available in hardcover, ebook and audiobook and I did the audiobook myself. Yes. I yeah. and I got to hear a snippet of it and I was like, that's Spencer. You did it yourself. Listen, that's Spencer. I did. Thank God I had like a movie level sound producer and a professional uh, sound engineer. No, you do have a, you have a good a good voice for that. I appreciate that. But <laughs> Man, reading your own words is one of the most difficult things you will ever have to do in publishing. That's funny. Glenn, Glenn says the same thing. Yeah. Glenn says the same thing. Um, and then tell them where they can find you on social media. Uh, if you just Google Spencer Corson, I am Spencer Corson, the actor. For, because I had, if you watch Zero Dark Thirty and you see the guy getting drugged by the dog getting under the helicopter, that's me. <laughs> um, but I, I'm a security <laughs> professional, threat management expert. Uh, thesafetytrap.com, CorsonSecurityGroup.com. I'm on Instagram at S.Corson, Twitter Spencer Corson, LinkedIn Spencer Corson. Do you want to give your social security as well, or is that a, is that a security management Eight, six, threat? 865309. <laughs> uh, also, don't forget to uh, subscribe to Yaku Puyan's show. You can find him on Instagram, you can find him on YouTube. And uh, that's it for us. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.